hyperkinetic dysarthria. Hyperkinetic, not hypokinetic, is not what many people think, speaking too fast, but it's actually too much movement. So hyper meaning increased or excess and kinetic meaning movement. So don't get it mixed up with hypokinetic and don't get it mixed up with talking quickly. And it doesn't mean excess muscle tone either. So hyperkinetic dysarthria is when you have excess movement of the speech apparatus. And there can be a number of causes. Um, so possible causes, probably the most iconic one would be Huntington's disease, which is a horrible uh, genetic disease, a hereditary disease. Tardive dyskinesia is another example. And tardive dyskinesia occurs when you have certain neuroleptic drugs, psychiatric drugs. And we will have a look at a video of this. But the neuroleptic drugs can cause completely involuntary oral and facial movements and lingual movements. Tourette's is another one. We'll also have a look at a video of this. Tourette's is not just about um, cursing and swearing. In fact, that aspect of it is really exaggerated. It's not the most common aspect, and as a health professional, you should um, you should know more about the real Tourette's than what the media portrays. Um, any sort of tremor is an excess unwanted movement. So even though tremor is synonymous with Parkinson's, as I explained in another video, um, you don't actually get tremor of the speech apparatus all that often in Parkinson's. And so Parkinson's is not typically hyperkinetic dysarthria. However, when people with Parkinson's are over-medicated, when they have too much levodopa, um, that causes excess writhing sort of movements called dyskinesias. That is technically hyperkinetic dysarthria if it, if it affects their speech. So these are just some examples of causes. Obviously, there are many more. But what are the actual mechanisms of these excess movements and, and therefore the mechanisms of hyperkinetic dysarthria? As with hypokinetic dysarthria, it's caused by the basal ganglia, this group of um, quite deep structures in the brain. Now, it's not fully understood how all these um, movement disorders occur from the basal ganglia, but some of the circuits in this, and it's very complicated, but some of them suppress movement and some of them excite movement. And when one of those things, one of those pathways is not behaving correctly, it can result in either not enough movement or excess movement. So if it's excess movement, and it affects speech, then it's um, hyperkinetic dysarthria. Hyperkinetic dysarthria is not distinctive in its own right. It's a group of lots of different disorders, um, so it doesn't have a specific sound by itself. The way you'll be able to diagnose it is just by looking at what is happening with someone's speech and is it caused by involuntary or compulsive movement, and that's the way you know that it's hyperkinetic. So the key thing with hyperkinetic is that speech is often... Normal, So it's not necessarily that they can't make these movements or can't produce normal speech. It's that they have to deal with superimposed movement. So it's just like the old TV trope um, that you see on cartoons and that sort of thing. And I'm by no means making a joke of this because it's not a fun thing to have at all. But it's like the TV trope where someone has either a spell cast on them or magic dancing shoes and they can't stop moving. It's not that that person can't walk. It's that they have to deal with all this extra movement. Obviously, it's very socially unacceptable to have these things, and it can be very devastating for people. Most commonly affected is the jaw and the tongue, um, the face as well, facial movements, grimacing and that sort of thing. But also, if someone has more um, whole body dyskinesia, more whole body movements that they can't control, that can affect the neck or maybe the trunk. And even if the arms and shoulders are moving, you can imagine the effect that has on controlling your respiration for breathing or controlling your phonation, which in turn affects sort of resonance. So it can affect each system. And it's not necessarily speech anatomy that has to be directly affected. It can have an indirect hyperkinetic dysarthria. Now, there are a heap of different types of movement disorders. Or should I say categories of dis uh, movement disorders? So these are the kind of different labels across the bottom here. Um, I'm not going to go into them in detail. It's it's probably not a strength of mine, but in any case, it's um, we haven't got enough time. But you can see, depending on what the movement looks like and and kind of the cause, 
it has a different name and you start to get to know some of these. And we'll just have a look at a couple of these. So there's a table here that gives you basic definitions. Um, but let's have a look at a couple of examples. First one we're going to look at is dystonia, which is basically muscle contractions that hold for quite a while. So dystonia can have a number of causes. Um, in the video we're going to watch, the cause is a neuroleptic medication, so for schizophrenia, um, resulting in dystonia. So, when did, when did you start having trouble talking? So obviously this man's jaw is wide open. Early. His lip, the facial movement's pretty good actually, despite that. But you can see his tongue's also not moving. It's just pretty much at rest in his mouth, and actually is probably quite tense. Early this morning. And did you take any drugs? Other other than your prescribed drugs. I would say there's some neck flexion too because he's sort of um, in that flexed position. Oh. No? You don't do cocaine or anything like that? Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, uh. No? Okay. Whether that movement just here was an actual dystonia or whether he was just kind of scrunching up one eye to try and express himself. Anything like that? I'm not uh, sure. Uh, oh. No? Uh, okay. Count to ten for me. One, two, four, 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 four. Facial movement looks okay overall. It's really jaw and tongue. You can see he's just at the front there, his tongue was just moving at the tip. And that's as much as he can manage. Phonation is normal, respiration appears to be normal. And after they give him Benadryl, he improves quite a bit. Alright, cool. I feel better. Um, Jaw's pretty good. Tongue's still not doing everything it should. Articulation's not quite there. Quick question. Oh. Uh, has has the, the pupil on this eye, has it been bigger than the, the pupil on your other eye for a while? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Yes, it has. It has, okay. So if someone pinned your tongue down to the bottom of your mouth and you tried to talk, that's more or less what you'd sound like. So that was dystonia, and that was temporary in this case. Another type of dystonia which affects the laryngeal muscles specifically is spasmodic dysphonia. And if you're someone who believes that uh, dysphonia is a type of is a subset of dysarthria, then that fits perfectly. In any case, listen to this lady. She's got dystonia of the the internal muscles of the larynx, which makes her vocal folds snap open or remain open after she opens them for uh, voiceless sounds. I have the rare version, the AB or the abductor version. My vocal cords uh, stay open rather than open and shut, and I sound breathy quite frequently. He saw a half a shape mystically cross 50 or 60 steps in front of his sister Kathy's house. So she's kind of fighting with her own vocal folds to keep them adducted enough to phonate. Um, but they're trying to open and therefore she's got that breathy sort of voice. I mean, you wouldn't diagnose this as hyperkinetic dysarthria because the more specific diagnosis is spasmodic dysphonia. But just for interest's sake, that's there it is. And then the other type, adductor type spasmodic dysphonia, is where the vocal folds want to close really tightly rather than closing enough to phonate. I have the AD form of spasmodic dysphonia plus a tremor component with it. So you can hear the tremor in her voice on top of the adduction, the vocal folds snapping shut. Early one morning, a man and a woman were ambling along a one-mile lane running near rainy Can you hear that? avenue intermittent tightness that strain in the voice and i'm not a voice expert but i think um the tremor is probably secondary to the spasmodic dysphonia in her trying to fight the dystonia in the vocal folds so the next one we'll look at is tardive dyskinesia as I said, this also comes about from some psychiatric medications. 
So see that jaw movement? That is completely involuntary. She's not doing it as a nervous twitch or anything like that. It just happens. And the tongue writhing as well, poking out of the mouth. You can imagine what that feels like, or what that is like socially for her, and how it would affect speech. This, remember, one this is a subtle version. See her lips and... Movement which may actually be extreme normal. Lips this are moving in and out. To be extreme normal and should be scored so it's a lot two. more subtle, but it is still a problem. That the size of the lip movements. smacking happening there. It's a tardive dyskinesia. Nothing he can do to stop that. Here's someone trying to speak with tardive dyskinesia. Almighty, enough for one person, one meal. He's got a lot of strong facial dyskinesia on the left side. And trying to eat his meal with jaw and facial movement that you can't control. That's what I'm talking about when I say it's like the superimposed movement. I'm not depressed or nothing like that. Whatever's wrong with me, she's getting on my nerves. But There's neck dystonia as well here, I think. Okay, next one is chorea, um, which is rapid, irregular, involuntary movements. And the key thing is that they are quite fast. Chorea means dancing in Greek. So Sydenham's chorea is one such disorder, which is what the girl that we're about to see has. And it comes from infection from a specific type of um, bacteria. Hi, I'm Rosemary, and it's the dark so her tongue is making those movements while she's trying to speak and you can hear what that's doing to her. Slight facial movements as well. I love school and I at home my See the movement on the right side there? Her right. So that wasn't permanent, and this is her later on well, after recovery. I'm pretty well now. It has taken me three months to recover almost. So pleased to know she recovered quite well. So that's Coria. You can see that none of these necessarily sound the same but they've got that feature of excess movement. Last one is ticks. Now ticks are slightly different. Ticks are slightly different because they're not completely involuntary. Rather than being involuntary, they're voluntary, but they are irresistible. So um, if you want to get a feeling of what it's like to have Tourette's, just try, um, just try holding saliva in your mouth for 90 seconds without swallowing. So you, after a while, maybe 20, 30 seconds, you'll get an urge to swallow. Just ignore that and see how the pressure kind of builds the longer you don't swallow for. Because swallowing is kind of the same. It's, it is voluntary, but there's an urge to swallow after a while and that builds with a sort of pressure. I'm Antonio Cardoso. I'm 24 years of age. I was diagnosed with Tourette's when I was uh, 13. People need to know that we're all one and we're all together. We're we're just the same as everyone else basically and so we just need to get that so that's right compulsive part. sort of and movements and you can see it's affecting his speech that would be great if you would like more information about threats or tech disorders go to threatalliance.org obviously the first problem is he's irish so he's got a really strong accent um there's no cure for that i'm antonio cardoso i'm 24 years of age uh, so jaw and sort of when I was lip movements uh, 13. <laughs> and some know that tension in the neck one. there. And we're all together, we're, we're just the same as everyone else basically. And so we just need to get that word out there. And if you could all just help us and support us. So they are some examples of hyperkinetic dysarthria. They're kind of self-evident, you don't need a, a especially trained ear to pick them. And really the shortcut is already here, excess movement. 
Excess involuntary compulsive movement causes hyperkinetic dysarthria. Thanks for listening. Check out my other videos on the other subtypes of dysarthria. And maybe if you have topic requests, leave them in the comments. Thanks.